massive thumbs up from me. So why is it called the base? The best places in Australia are generally the hardest to get to. So this is the perfect base for your next adventure. Let's take a closer look. So what gets me excited about Zone RVs is the way the external bodies are manufactured. We've got one piece floors which are 30 millimetres thick. We've got side walls and roofs which are also 30 millimetres thick with solid foam cores. The insulation values on these panels are absolutely awesome. Now what does that mean for you? If you're using heating or cooling in these vans, they're not working anywhere near as hard as what a framed caravan might be doing. This base package kicks off on our proven chassis design with our huge big gusseted front drawbar all wrapped up in a hot dip gel chassis. Hanging off the front we've got a DO35 hitch with full articulation. In behind it we've got an Anderson for power out and then we've got a 7 pin plug for lights and braking. Also here we've got the trailer safe breakaway and the Safety Dave single lens camera package tucked nicely in behind it. Moving back, we've got the jack stand here, which is just an effortless winding piece of equipment. Absolutely love that. In behind the jack stand, we've got our proven stone guard offering great protection for the van. Due to us running compressor fridges where we're not using gas, we're running two four and a half kilo gas bottles for all of our cooking and heating needs in the base. On the front here, we've got this huge volume toolbox. Driver side, we've got a generator slide. Passenger side, we've just got a big large utility slide. On the top of the box, we've got a firewood carrier and a nice flat surface for any other types of accessories that we want to bolt on later. Up the front of the van here, we've got our huge big tunnel boots. Heaps of different options of kitchens that can go in here with standard gas bayonet ready to go. So this is what we call our entertainment hatch. TV bracket for taking the TV from the inside to the out. 240 on the outside when needed, 12 volt and USB sockets and obviously this awesome table here for food and drinks. So all the windows in this van are fully double glazed blades, bonded in window frames with shades and insect nets on the interior. With these vans having just over 2,400 kilo empty weight and a three and a half tonne loaded weight, you're looking at almost 1,100 kilos of payload in this van. Now it's the XT coil suspension which is taking the brunt of all of that We've got the 16-inch steel rims wrapped in Discovery AT3 Cooper tyres as standard. Under a full-length awning, we've got two external lights with bug deterrent mode, which is absolutely critical. On the back of the base here, we've got a heavy-duty gel dip rear bar, single spare wheel, and a single lens rear view camera. In the rear here, we've got the Dometic cassette toilet. And up here, we've got the refrigeration venting. When you're on the road, this hatch is closed and no dust is coming in. When you're set up at camp, it's fully open, insect mesh in there, and this fridge is breathing really well, which in turn means that you are chewing less power. And just next to it here, we've got the 240 shore power in, some antenna connections, and the Truma hot water heater exhaust. What really sets Zone RV interiors apart is the fact that we are 100% timberless. We use a myriad of composite materials which are really light and really strong that handle off-road corrugations day in, day out. So apart from the main big structures that are bonded in place and don't move, the other thing we have is doors. Now in off-road caravans, doors can really give you grief. And the way we tackle that at Zone is we've got these big bonding plates that go on the inside of the door so that the hinges can firmly attach and these doors do not move. With great accessibility and all the weight straight over the centre of the axles, we've got the power system. We've got the Red Arc Manager 30 as the main system driver. We've got two 120 AGM batteries, 360 watts of solar on the roof with plenty more real estate to load it up with whatever you like. So we've got the Bushman 190 litre fridge freezer, which is 12 volt 240 compressor fridge. So under the fridge, we've got the Truma 4E. Now the 4E gives us our hot water, as well as a fully ducted heated system. So on all the trips I've done with Zone in the last five years, I've genuinely never used an air conditioner once. What we have used a lot of though is heating systems. Whether you're in the desert, the high country, 
down in Tasmania, these things are absolutely valuable. So the difference we've done with this base model is it does have a heater in it as standard, but no air conditioner on top. There's nothing more frustrating than being off-road caravanning and at the end of the day opening the door and finding a van full of dust. Now any caravan that has gas in it by regulation has to have venting. But what we do at Zone RV, we have these little vents that come out here. We have a marine inspection port. As soon as you hit the dirt, these covers go in and these vans are sealed right up. If you're looking for a van with super off-road capabilities, the base is the van for you. Zone's build technology delivers massive payloads, off-grid capabilities, all wrapped up into one comfortable, functional and modern package. For more information, get in contact with the team. Five, four, three, two, one. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the Caravan Camping Sales Virtual Show. Uh, I'm here today with Marty Bell, good mate, general manager. Um, welcome mate. Cheers sure there, thank you very much. We're here today and we're going to have a yeah, live factory Q&A. We're, we're down here uh, in what we'd call Bay 2 on our production line where a fair bit of the excitement happens. So we're right in the thick of it here and um, yeah, as, uh, as we work through this, you guys ask questions and they'll come up and we'll do our best possible yeah. way of answering these questions by visuals and uh, yeah, work through it. But um, probably a quick introduction to who we are and what we do here and what we're about. But um, we're probably coming up to about five or six years old now. We're probably reasonably young in the caravan in industry. Um, but we've come from the background of, of marine uh, and building big lightweight structures. And um, yeah, we sort of fell into the caravan game and you know, a few partnerships and friendships have grown along the way and we've sort of grown this product to where it is today. And um, for us, you know, super lightweight, high strength, uh, I guess, yeah, really couple that with some high-end luxury yachting background, um, and we end up with a, you know, extremely stylish package that's built out of all the latest and greatest materials that we can use to uh, build caravans. So it's exciting times for us here at Zone at the moment. We're gearing production up, um, you know, as quickly and as safely as we possibly can because, you know, we are seeing peak demands uh, for this product and and we obviously all know why that is and that's you know people aren't being out of travel and uh, a bunch of people that didn't think they were going to be caravanners six months ago were uh, right in the thick of it ordering vans and uh, setting up trucks and getting ready to uh, spend the next couple of years you know journeying around this country and um, Obviously the latest trend and the latest thing we're all into is trying to get away to the most remote places. And uh, like I sort of, my favorite saying, you know, the, the, the best places in Australia are generally the hardest to get to. Um, and, and with pieces of equipment like this, uh, yeah, we're really opening up Australia and taking a pretty luxury unit that's really capable for off-road Australian terrain, which is, you know, in general big, long, heavy corrugated, dusty roads, um, and we can reach some of these amazing places. And um, I'm pretty excited right at the moment because uh, this is one of the new bases, a 20 foot six family bunk van. Um, and that one's got my name on it. I'm heading to the Gulf next month uh, with my family and uh, gonna make the, uh, yeah, the most. We're, we're, we're probably fitting into that bill of being somebody who was we planned on getting away overseas this year, and I'm uh, I'm actually really really excited that um, we get to get away in this thing and go and have some adventures up north. Um, but anyway, that's about us and what we've got going on. So um, we've actually just been given a couple of questions here that um, we are told from our sales team that are pretty high on the list that you know gets gets asked quite regularly. So um, our first one here is, uh, you know, 
why or do we make our own chassis? And the answer to that is yes, um, we make our own chassis. Our chassis are pretty unique to our vans. Um, obviously, we're a, a full sandwich structure on the top, which is you know the main big body of our van, and, and, and that sandwich structure that we bond together is extremely stiff and strong, and is um, is really in its own right a hell of a lot stronger than any chassis we can put below it. So in turn for us, we get to build a chassis which is quite a long way different to how a conventional caravan chassis is built, which is quite a lot of steel stacked up to get the stiffness. We're not looking for the stiffness out of the chassis as much through the, the mid connection. We're looking for key areas where the suspension's hanging off and you know making that as, as strong as we possibly can. We're really quite thin in profile as we come through here and I always talk about the distance between the back wheel of the, uh, the vehicle and the, um, the front wheels of the caravan being probably one of the more important parts to me for how much ground clearance we have. And because we are a single plane chassis, we're, we're in general about 150 millimetres better off than a lot of other um, chassis designs. Um, and then the big unique zone drawbar, which has got a huge big gusset there. That thing is bulletproof. There's not, a, there's not another drawbar around like it. And the nicest looking. Um, and it's signature. Everyone, everyone knows a, a zone when you see one go past. So our chassis are unique. There's, there's nobody else making that type of exact chassis the way we want it. So we bring it in house. Uh, we have big master jigs where we lay all of the laser cut metal in there. We cut very little steel on site. Um, and, and really there's a bunch of engineered folded sections which have pulled a lot more weight out um, as opposed to using some RHS members. Um, and we end up with a chassis that's, you know, it, it is light, it's strong, it, it's amazing for the purpose that we use it. Um, and it's all built to a very high tolerance and, and that, that, that means um, basically for the guys that then build the caravan on top of it, they're dealing with a very true and straight structure, which definitely makes it a hell of a lot easier. So I hope that helps explain why we like to build our chassis in-house and we're proud of our fabrication shop. They do a great job down there and I mean, you don't have to look to, well, you can look very close at his own RV chassis and it's a, uh, it's a nice, nice metal structure. It's a bit of a piece of art, all very well welded. And um, yeah, we, we're very proud of the, uh, the chassis that all these men sit on. Um, I might pass this one over to you, mate, but it's explain the inside out process and, and why we build from, from the inside out. What's, uh, what's that all about? Oh, the, the main reason that we build the bands inside out is that we can actually um, Build it in sub, sub assemblies and components. We have access to our, all our wiring and our plumbing at any one time. Um, people can work on the outside of the caravan while they're installing things. Uh, and what it does mean is that it's not five or six guys clamping over each other inside the caravan. It means that we can get our quality right. Uh, we can see all our fixing points, the way the urethane and glue uh, the cabinetry to the floor. Um, that's a main part of our structure is we actually glue all that cabinetry to the floor because we don't have um, any frame structure within our walls. Um, and I think that that's the difference too. I see Peter here has, um, or Pete Wine has asked a question to explain the difference between the composite walls and timber uh, when it comes to strength and flex. And basically that's why we build with the materials we build. So the fiberglass floor that we have, composite floor, it's also insulation. But the cabinetry itself, uh, the way we build that, that becomes a framework. So the sandwich panel walls are very lightweight um, and we don't have any uh, material uh, changes in temperature which can cause condensation and things like that uh, by using the composite laminates, uh, by gluing our floor, uh, cabinetry to the floor and bonding the walls to the cabinetry, that becomes our structure and we really rely on that uh, and that gives us that rigidity and our whole frame. Uh, the other part of that also is by all the walls come laser cut um, and they will fit it out for the various component cutouts for windows and doors and frame hatches and things like that, even down to holes in for your lights, um, etc. Uh, but the, the key structure to that is also our, our, our roof is uh, one piece right from the comes right from the rear over the top 
down the front against all bondrons. There's an extrusion hanger that we have here. Uh, so once again, it's all urethane. Um, I see David Britton's here asking, asking us about the urethane glue. Yes, yeah, the marine grey urethanes that we do use. Uh, and that's part of our bonding. Um, into our extrusion, for example, we have ribs in here. The reason we have ribs in the extrusion is that when you when you put in a, a, a flat surface into another to another surface, like into uh, an extrusion, we have to put the ribs inside there to allow for the glue to stay in there. Because otherwise, you push the glue straight out with just sheer force. So the bonding is uh, is key to our um, to our whole structure. But that's that's pretty well. why I don't have fr uh, frame walls, so we don't have uh, uh, the, we don't have any rot. Um, if there's any water leaks in any description. The only way one of our bands leaks is a hole that we physically put it on ourselves. So yeah, that's the whole structure to our, to, to our bands. Uh, gives it a monocot construction tied into the chassis like Dave explained before. Uh, that makes the, the difference to how we build our structure of bands. Cool, mate. Well, that uh, definitely summarises a few of those questions. There's obviously, yeah, the, the glues and, yeah, to, 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 to summarise on that, it's, yeah, just a bunch of polyurethanes. Uh, and MS polymers, which in really simple terms, they're, they're, they're single part glues. They've got really high elongation. Um, so as we know, and I was talking about before, corrugations are really the killers of caravans. Um, and to have a glue that is really, really flexual, um, these vans do move around and the, the glues aren't brittle, which a lot of brittle things in these applications will just crack. Um, so yeah, those urethanes are a really key component in this, this whole external body um, arrangement and um, the, there's a bunch of questions really coming here like Marty's answered just on the, the, the composite walls, does the wiring run through the outside of the composite walls? Um, again, as, as you can really see here, all of the wiring's in behind the cabinetry. Uh, there's, there's inspection panels all through the backs of the cabinetry so that if there is any troubleshooting that needs to happen with a, um, a component that's not working or you want to add any things later, wiring can run anywhere through the backs of these. And, and look, yes, we do have to run a couple of wires in the walls or the roofs uh, when we have to, um, but in our design office it's a massive philosophy that it's a, it's a last resort. Um, and, that, and that really probably links up those questions there around framed caravans versus full sandwich panel structures. Um, you know, both, both very different um, engineering approaches um, and both can get the job done. Uh, we're obviously major fans of the fiberglass foam sandwich panels uh, because of their, their strength and weight. Um, obviously the insulation that you know, that these vans are absolutely incredible on, on their insulation values and, and that's also because of the 30 mil sandwich floor. Um, floor's a, a huge heat loss area. Um, and yeah, that, that, yeah, really those, the, the external body on these vans which is made up of the, the sandwich panels is just a, for us, an integral way um, to create such a strong lightweight structure. Um, what do we got here? XPS panels, um, conduits. Yeah, look, I think I think that um, that probably covers off on a bunch of the the sandwich panel structures. Um, what's the main weight savings you got compared to competitors? So yeah, there's a question here which probably circles back to the same thing really, but. Where are we getting our weight savings in these vans? Um, everything I'm talking about that's happening on the exterior of the body there to give a stiff structure, which in turn gets us to pull steel out of the chassis. Uh, that's probably a key one on the exterior. Um, the interior is, well, we're using a bunch of sandwich panel structures on the interior. And uh, we're just achieving a lighter weight, stronger structure using these materials than a timber. Um, and, 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 and that's um, obviously couple of those two things together and, and, and that's where we're getting our weight advantage. Um, there's some questions here at the moment around key timings on, um, on being able to get a van if you were to place an order right now, mate. Where, where are we at with our premium vans and, and bases? Well, basically the premium vans are, is a we're lucky to have the moment with uh, COVID coming in and obviously uh, 
the industry is uh, uh, moving forward exponentially, a tenfold with uh, we're booked out till uh, the new year with off road bands at the moment currently. Yep, so, so January, 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 February, January, February, we February this year. Up. We've got we've got a few spots in February, March gone already. Yep. In April. Uh, but uh, the next one is at base. We've opened up. So with bringing in the base, we had actually added 48 slots into our production line just for the base alone, and uh, over half of those are sold as well already. So we're into sort of October deliveries. A couple of spots in uh, October, November at the moment currently, but that's happening. Changing day, and I haven't checked today's okay. tallies because uh, last week, last month, we had a record month. Yeah. So. No, no, it's definitely um, <clears throat> good times. Um, we've got another one here, so we've got got a question basically asking about the timings, and this is probably another good one for you, mate. What what is that sort of process that you know from order there, where we're talking about the twelve week process to handover? What, what's the what's the basic sort of fundamentals that the, the key, flows through that? I suppose the key timings for us, Dave, is that for the business itself to order all our materials, uh, 16 weeks out now we actually engage with the client, with the customer, with the new customer, uh, especially on the off-road bands, where we customise and we do a lot of options and we, get, we send out um, a set of drawings that, to your particular design and your options and needs on your van. Uh, we, by the 12 week mark, we need to have that signed off so we can start to all those parts. Start out processing because the big part for us is to keep our stick to our dates. We give you a date, we deliver on that date. Uh, we stick to it 100%. And to do that, we have to uh, make things what we to, in manufacturing, we have to do sub assemblies and do a lot of sub assemblies. You can see over the shoulder here uh, a lot of things we do in our sub assembly department. We're very lucky to have moved to this new building at Christmas time. Uh, over the break and uh, we've got a lot more space. Uh, it's a nice bright light workshop to be working in and it's given us an opportunity to expand our sub assembly area where we put a lot of time and effort in. So a lot of all that cabinetry um, is actually uh, has all the appliances fitted to it, our wiring rooms are fitted to it. Um, it, it allows for our quality be, to be 100%. We can check off that uh, lights, fittings, fans and things work before we install them into the van as components. And uh, so part of that process is uh, for 12 weeks, is that's why we need that. So when the van hits the line, an off-road an off van at the moment particularly takes us a, call it a one and a half day build process. So it's built within sort of uh, 10, 11 days to the end. And our base, we've actually just got the first base, your, your uh, bunk van going through day, which is the second one we've built from the pr prototype. Uh, we built it as a team. Uh, just in, on a, in an R&D area, we're, we're very excited, we've got the whole team invo involved in that for the sales team, to the design team, to the guys on the floor building the vans, what's the most efficient way to build a van, what do we need, what's the end, end uh, user need, uh, and we just broke that right down, and that's what we call the base. So you can take that somewhere, uh, we have all our wonderful bling and, and uh, systems in our main vans, but we tend to think to ourselves, Sales, what's the core reason that we're ahead of the rest of the um, industry? And we always have been, we're leaders, call ourselves leaders, and that's our weight. So we took weight out of everywhere we could possible, and we even took that out of our wiring systems um, right down to the way we're doing our wiring. So we've taken weight even, even out of the wiring. We've got good heavy duty wiring, but what we've done is we've, part of our sub assembly system is we've broken it down so it's easy to build on a bench, but we've taken uh, we're taking it to a 6 BNS cable between each multi-link, so we have a, a, a link between um, different components instead of bringing all your cabling. Hundreds and hundreds of metres of cable goes in a van, it's all Do we have a quick show of like just what the wiring is and why yeah, our sure. wiring's a bit special and you know that we're using, yeah, sure. using harnesses? So um, we can probably get you a little bit closer here and um, maybe Marty just show through some of this detail as what, what sort of, you know, quality and, and detail that the harnesses are in. We're actually probably going to come to the side of the van here, if we can come to this side. Uh, uh, to give you an idea of what, we, what we're sort of taking is, what we're doing is we're, everything's going to a hub. So this uh, system here is a marine grade C-zone um, electrical digital switching system. This is in our, uh, all our range of vans from the uh, Venture up to the Summit. So Venture uh, off-road and Summit. We run the same system. We have what we call a NEMA cable, which is called a backbone cable. So this is the main cable system here. 
uh, multi cables into, into, into joins that go into this, what we call a contact six uh, hub. And what that it does is it allows us to make the whole bedroom area, everything that works in this bedroom, the lights, the switching for the 12 volt in the tunnel boots and things like that, allows us to take the one area. And if there's a fault in any, any way, we can trace it really easily. And not only that, we can actually uh, tell an uh, end user how to, uh, to fix a fault, easily identify where that's coming from. Instead of trying to trace it through a wire through the whole van, we can take it to one spot. So we've broken it up into these con contact six units. We've got one on the front of the van. We've got one in the, uh, above the lounge, uh, another one above in the kitchen. Um, oh, there's actually two in the lounge. And what that does is it splits the whole van up. So basically we're just taking one cable and linking it between these contact units, which is digital switching in this, in this instance. Um, and then there's also, with the system of a digital switching system does um, fault down for some reason, you can go into the system, take out a fuse, and you just move that fuse to the next hole up, and that means that it's manual again. So you can just flick that, um, that power system off with flicks or the switch. So what I mean by the main power system is, we just have these main power systems, six BNS cable, all it takes, linking from the battery, to each contact six plus that takes the main power feed through. Now we have these cavities we designed from day one when we built zones right from the day one. We allowed for all these cavities to get to everything. Every time, everywhere there's a join, you'll see a, a an, an opening from inside the van, inside that wardrobe there. You can take unscrew a panel, um, which is in threaded uh, inserts. So it's machine machine screws. It's not just a screw into some timber they can pull out later on. Uh, and you can get to those joints with the spotlight in the front of your van uh, coming down into the bedroom area. You can get to any of the joints. Uh, and any of these openings, uh, all our cabling um, is made by Casey Bros and NZ. Uh, it's covered in a, um, in a sheath that's very flexible. Um, it can take corrugation, it can rub against anything anywhere um, and not actually um, fray or, or uh, come apart in any way. Uh, just while we're here, I'll show you our 240 volt system. We've gone to this as well, it's a CMS system. Um, basically, there is no wiring, the guys on the floor aren't actually physically wiring each, each individual terminal and they can't get it wrong, it's a plug and play. So there's multiple, multiple um, ways we can uh, change that. I'm not sure we can go down this side or down the other side, we've got enough cable. Got a bit more. Um, just to sort of rewrite re that a bit more. Um, when we come, you can have a look here. This is, uh, so we have these joiners. There's a spare one here. The whole system plugs together. It locks in, it can't come undone, you actually physically have to use a tool to unplug it. Um, means that we can, no one can get it wrong, everything's plug and play. And the other part to that is, see we've got a three-way splitter here, we can actually add something to that very easily. If you want to add an inverter or a, a GPO switch at a later date, another, uh, you can easily just plug that in. It's just an extension. So that's the flexibility we've got in our power systems. And you can see here we've got cavities for our kit cabling, we have fans in our systems. We've also got where we've got, we have these, um, all the pass overs between um, the front of the van and the other side of the van. We don't actually run that through the floor. We run it in, in tubing and piping for protection underneath the floor. There's plenty of room in there. You can see the flex I'm pulling on here to the other side. That allows you can pull through a cable at any one time. There's always access to that. So if you need to service your van or add anything to that van, you can just run another cable through there and up through those cavities. Um, and you can get to those uh, terminals connections really easily. So, uh, so the wiring is not, it's not inside the van and the, and the walls. Most, most uh, timber vans, frame vans, or an aluminium frame van, the frame here, they have the internal lining, the furniture's in place and they're drilling holes through all the, cabin, all, all the um, framework, which is one weakening in the framework. But what they're doing is they're putting the cable in the walls and then they're putting the cladding on the outside, you can never get to it again. Whereas this way here, you can always get to it, uh, especially for servicing or changing a product um, and also fault finding. So that's probably one of the key So there's, a, there. there's yeah. a couple of other questions there about sort of pointing out or getting us to point out what the main differences are on these vans. And, um, you know, that, that whole electrical system that being accessible is, is a really huge benefit um you know to think that you're going to get an off-road caravan and you know push it pretty hard and not have some issues with appliances and things along the way um you know you're probably kidding yourself so at some point these all this stuff needs to be gotten to um and, and it's just a magical uh thing to work on afterwards um because you can get to all of this electronics and um while you're sort of looking in around this area 
at, at this point in time here, this this all of this furniture has literally been bonded down. So you can see here, this has been bonded today. There's literally excess glue coming out of all of these cabinetry frames that are bonded to the floor. Um, now, it, it is a really key thing for us, and, and bonding this furniture to the floor as opposed to rolling your vinyl flooring through and screwing furniture, furniture down through the vinyl flooring and into a, a floor panel it, it is really, I guess, what most people in the construction industry would talk about is a floating floor. And a floating floor is not what you want in an off-road caravan. Um, we want, obviously, all of this furniture to be firmly bonded to the floor um, and, and then, obviously, bonded to a sidewall or a roof wherever it's coming in contact. And it is that whole integral structure of the inside being firmly bonded to the walls and the floor that also, from, from an engineering point of view, really locks these things up. So, but the main one I'm trying to make the point of is you, you just can't have a structural uh, component like cabinets acting as a as a part of the engineered structure if it's not firmly planted to the floor there. So, um, but, but but with our ethos of using the cabinetry as an engineered structure to, to support the rest of the van, um, we sort of end up with this beautiful looking cabinetry um, and it's not just your sort of normal old screw together cabinetry. A lot of the stuff is is um, we, we, we do tend to use some aluminium extrusions on, on the interior. They have no contact to the outside of the van so we don't get thermal loss. But they're sort of big bonded surface areas up there in the overheads. Um, and it's a bit of a funny joke around here because in, in, when we first got into the caravan industry I remember going into a van somewhere and the, the, the salesman telling me how good an off-road caravan it was because he could do a chin-up off the uh, off the overhead and I thought okay yeah that's an interesting way to you know show that the overhead's not going to fall off but genuinely for us here with the glues that we're using um, you know we do some calculations and and see what the sort of holding structures and shear strengths of uh, some of these glues to the extrusions and then the fiberglass and you know we're seeing numbers of like six to eight ton to be able to move an overhead off the roof or the wall, so obviously never a number that you're going to be able to uh, apply to it in real life, but this stuff, once it's all put together, is, um, yeah, it, it really, really strong. So, what do you got there, mate? Well, this is just a bit like I was explaining a sub-assembly here. We're doing everything in a sub-assembly. So this is built offline. Normally, uh, in the past, they're fitting this stuff up in a caravan. You've got a guy inside trying to fit all these off, running all the cables. Uh, for, for this to be installed, it's simply just plug and play, and that's how simple it is. Um, <clears throat> so, that, so that's making a huge difference for us. So we're not compromising quality, we're actually enhancing our quality. Um, and, you know, we're not we worried about ramping up, you know, just got to ramp up. So are, you know, coming thick and fast and we're thinking, what are we going to do? We've got to ramp up, make more vans. Well, we don't, we're not going to compromise our quality. That's, that's, that's the key thing for us because we're actually taking control of it. You can see across behind, behind us here, even just uh, an, uh, an off-road, uh, sorry, this is one of our base cabinets. We've now got to the stage where the whole cabinet has got its fans fitted, its energy lights fitted. Um, it's got a fuse block fist system fitted here. The hardware's fitted. The whole thing is fitted out and it's just plug and play. So same thing again. We're plugging our cabinets together. Good old traditional way. You can't beat an, an Anderson joint, Anderson plug joint. Plug and play. It's 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 that's how we're making it, so, and it can be tested on the bench. So what Marty ref was referring to before about his Cuzzy Bros is um, we use one of the most premium harness manufacturers in the world. That's over in New Zealand. <laughs> of course. Uh, and you know they're doing anything from automotive to aviation, and and you know to to have wiring turn up that has been terminated by a machine um, and the quality of all of these terminations on how they're fitted and how they're wrapped it's obviously um, you know the, the best electrician in the world with hand crimps and and basic tools that you would apply to a production line cannot make a grade of wiring that is is like that so um, we obviously pay a huge um, premium to, to put a product like that in our van um, 
but as anyone knows, in electrical systems, um, it's the key, right? <laughs> it, it, it's key to, to you know, if you are way out off grid for a number of reasons, you know, how, are you losing power through your terminals and, you know, the, the punishment that the harness systems and electrical system goes through in an off-road caravan just getting absolutely shaken apart, you cannot afford to have bad terminations there that, that will, will let go over time. So we might make our way back to the computer here and find out uh, what we got going on. There is a couple of more questions there, but can you... Any new updates in the expedition models? Um, not Mike, a huge amount. We, yeah, we, Mike, the Gene 2. Gene yeah, yeah, we, we, we are working on, on some updates for the expedition. Um, that's a project that's coming up for us in the next couple of months. Yeah, we're sold out in the expedition now um, until the end of February at the moment, so we're currently sold out to that point. So yep. it does give us an opportunity to, to uh, have another look at that. Um, yeah. And the uh, same thing again, we're looking at the weights uh, on that as well. Yep. It's, it's what we're trying to do across the board is get our weights down. I mean, we're, we're stoked with what we've come up with the base. You know, we've brought a 20 foot six band in here, fully finished at 24,440 uh, for a standard base 20 foot six band. Um, you know, we'll put the challenge out of anyone in the industry that can do that for a 20 foot six band, you know. Yeah, for big, full, full off road bands. capable. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and, and that's what I was sort of talking before by taking a lot of the cable things out. All those things add up. All those things add up to taking weight out of it, but we're not compromising on the quality uh, across the board. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's all about the way it goes. Russell has a question there about can you walk on the roof? Um, yeah, look, you can walk on the roof in a zone. Um, obviously, it's a, it's, a, it's a sandwich structure, so. Um, you know what you what you are careful of walking around on on these types of roofs is mainly that you're walking flat-footed. Any type of points or you know on your almost trying to go on the balls of your feet or your heels can can really apply point loading, and um, you know so it can can damage the panel a little bit if you weren't careful. Um, and obviously you need to be careful on anywhere where we do have some some tracked out ducting in our roofs too where we do have the minimal amount of wires um, but from a global engineering strength type thing um, you know I think when we all first started out and we thought it was a bit of a novelty you know we probably had like 20 uh, growing people standing in the middle of a zone roof and it's uh, you know it's a it, it, I mean it, it's a sandwich panel structure and they, they just love the you know, being loaded yeah. up like that, and it's a you know it's a pretty interesting thing to see. But obviously, the roofs now then they're not they're not a wafer thin piece of aluminium with frames underneath it. They're very well supported um, structure. Um, we're actually having a little bit of an issue trying to see back into the comments on this computer, so we've sort of lost a few. Um, Sure, Marty, are you any uh, wiser as to how to... Is that your ad for this Just doesn't seem to um, bring them up. Maybe Jade can come in here and <laughs> give us a little hand. We built caravans, not... Um, yeah, you can see we don't work in the marketing <laughs> department. <laughs> is, is, there any, is there any others um, you might be able to check on? On uh, on your phone and show us through. How about the family van? There was, there was actually a question about this bright scheme compatible with the computer control. Did it, mate? Yeah, that is a that's a different different system to use with that. Um, it's a five star Hydro Star system. Um, that can be used. That it needs to be used with disc brakes. Um, it's 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 an added cost, um, of course, but it's got a lot more uh, work uh, hydraulic system running with that. So it takes a bit more control. Um, it certainly, can be done. We've done it plenty of times, uh, or quite a few times. We've done we've done that. Uh, but nothing beats the old good old electric brake system that you can uh, control in your car. Um, either you know, uh, especially off road, uh, you can wind it up and down manually. Um, and the stability to control, well, 
that's one thing that we've uh, proud ourselves on. We don't have to have uh, anti-sway bars and all those things fitted to our caravans because they run so true and so clean. Um, and that's the, the whole thing comes back to our drawbar uh, and the shape of our drawbar and, and, why, and why we have this kick down on it. Um, it brings the centre of gravity back to the front of the van. Um, and, uh, you know, we don't, we've never had any issues. I mean, yeah, no, they, 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 these vans genuinely tow very well, and you know, obviously up the front and big, big long draw bars, and and getting the majority of the weight over the axles. Um, obviously, all of our water tanks uh, run through the centre of the van, so whether they're empty or or full, you, you, you're really not affecting your your ball weight as much. Um, as we were around the other side of the van before, you see those underneath the. the the lounge seating in any of these premium off-road vans and they are just loaded full of electronics um, and that's obviously you know for us those accessories are the weight um, so we, we get all of our heavy structures over the axles I mean that doesn't get much better than that if you look at that kitchen there that kitchen is a um, an extremely heavy structure um, you know if you saw the other side of that kitchen there there's 16 uh, drawers, opening drawers that come in and out of that and, and obviously people who are going off grid um, and are storing a lot of food and, and, and gear in that kitchen, um, a drawer is, is their number one preference. Um, so you can see the amount of weight that is smack bang over the axles um, and again it's that weight over the axles that, that really does help with making these a, a well balanced caravan to tow. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I suppose it comes back to it. It, it can be done uh, with, you know, hydraulic disc brakes can be done, of course, but stability control, it may, we've been using it for quite a while now. Um, it, I mean, how many vans out of 10 would you say would go through here with this? But to be honest, it's not a huge amount. Um, it's a personal preference thing, really. Personal Someone's preference. Hitch, but, different people have different hitches but, but, and stuff. But, Maybe one in twenty. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. Yeah. So you know, we we don't see a huge amount of it, but look, when you do see a van with it, it's it's generally a pretty nice looking package. Um, nice big discs on there, and um, to be honest, I actually don't think I've ever towed a van with discs, but I'm sure the thing's got some amazing brakes. Oh yeah, no, certainly um, Not to say that I mean one of these vans, you know, with the right braking arrangement and vehicle set up um, it is it is surprising how safe you, you actually can feel and um, when you know you've got all of that braking system dialed in um, you, you know like it, it is a big big weight to pull up but um, it is very surprising that they can pull up so quick um, and, and, and that all to me ties into the whole whole safety um, of these things which which again is is, is key to us. Um, I mean, it, it, it is a, a quite a large fatality rate in Australia for vans, and, and a lot of those fatalities come down to the fact that they're just, um, yeah, that they're, they're not balanced um, for towing, and they can easily get out of control um, at speeds or under braking. Um, so for us to, to make sure we get all of that right, um, we don't compromise. Um, you know, and a really good reason for that is we get a lot of people saying, oh, can I have an 18 foot six, but I want the rear door. And it's, it's like, no, you, you, I'm sorry, you can't. It, it's going to push the wheels too far forward. It's going to, you know, not be a balanced caravan. Um, and no matter how hard you want one, we're not going to build you one because it, 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 it will compromise the safety of the van. Um, and, and, and there's, you know, there's certain things that I think probably in, in Zone's history, um, there's people that come along and, and want want changes like that, and, and then there's certain things we just we we dig our heels right in, and um, you know, obviously a, a safe towing van is at, at, at the pinnacle of that. Oh, for sure, and, and every uh, chassis chassis that we do do, and every van we do do is designed and engineered by engineers. Uh, they spend time with that. They are designed by engineers that we have on staff and they are our own design. So, yeah, these I guys mean. spend a lot of time working that out. Yeah. And it comes down to some options. People something want to throw a lot of boxes on it. It's on their van, and uh, we come back to the core issue of weight. The uh, more options you add, the more weight you add, mm. the more wishes you're going to have. And, uh, you know, 
to be honest, that's a um, it is a key topic for us, and and I, I know for a fact I like having the conversations with the sales guys about the fact that you know the more options you sell to me isn't creating the better caravan. Um, obviously, there's you know huge amounts of options on our premium vans, and we've we've reined that back in a bit on the base just to keep standardisation and control of it and, and make sure we can get these things humming down our production line. Um, but for us, and definitely for me, it's not about going crazy on the options. Yeah, there's plenty of options you can tick, um, but for me, every dollar you spend is going to be weight. Um, you know, there are some options you can, you can choose. Um, in our vans, it actually can make further weight reductions. Um, and, and can cost a premium, but again, for me, it's about choosing the right couple of options that are going to meet the needs majority of the time. Um, because for me, the capability of these vans is about obviously filling them up with payloaded gear that's going to get you off grid somewhere for the longest possible time. And now that's obviously your water and your food, the, the necessities, um, the power obviously can be made along the way and, and, and really in the right conditions, endless. Um, but then to load it full of water, um, as I said, it, it is a key necessity. Um, but none of these places are easy to get to. Um, so, you know, the overall weight of your van really, to me, hugely impacts how that van's going to perform. Um, and that coupled with your four-wheel drive. So, you know, you've got the right four-wheel drive with the right equipment on it. It's not overloaded, it's not overstressed, um, and we're not doing the same thing to the caravan. And when, when, you know, people get that package right of the right truck, they've kept all of everything in check, not just loaded it full of accessories they're never going to use. Um, and, and that's definitely what I like to spruik with these vans. It's just get the gear in them that's going to suit the way you travel and hopefully that's not going to just mean ticking every box and keep it all in check and, and, and listen to our sales guys as they, they, they take you through the journey of, of um, putting one of these packages together because it, it's not a, it's not a you know, five minute job. It, it's about sitting down and talking through the process of, of yeah, really how you're going to travel and what type of traveller you are and, and work through ticking these options carefully and being very conscious that as you're ticking options, you're, you're ticking up the weight. And we do give a tally of the weight at the end, of within 5% of your weight, we think it's, it will be, of all your options, so you get very well aware of the options you're adding, the weight you're adding to your van. To okay. and, and, and majority of the time we're hitting that bait weight very well. If it's not, it, it could be, um, you know, we do have determining factors that can fluctuate, densities of materials obviously being a key one in the cabinet trick. Um, but you know, touch wood for, for the last 12 months. Composite, we, touch composite. <laughs> touch composite, no wood around here. <laughs> um, you know, we, we've, been, we've been getting pretty good at hitting our numbers there. And um, you know, I don't think there's a van that goes to the weigh bridge where there's a good handful of people in this team going, what's the weight, what's the weight, how close to the weight are we? Um, it gets talked about, I'd, I'd hate to know how many times weight gets talked about in this factory uh, in a day. Um, but we love talking about it. We love trying to get rid of it. Yeah, we've got um, a little bit of it. Bit of here, I think. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're, yep. <laughs> I thought you were going to ask me to pull us before on the overhead, but I'm all right. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, look, um, keep the questions coming in this thread. Uh, more than happy to keep punching out some answers, but we've got to, um, we've got to wrap this up. And maybe um, join the uh, Friends of uh, uh, Zone Facebook page and really see what existing clients are putting on, the questions they've been asked, it's a really good yep. time, any time of day or night you're not on there, yeah, someone's all gonna, always going to ask you, we've got a good team backing that uh, up, but existing clients are on there too, right? Well, existing clients and you know, the the customer base that we've built and the, the people that I guess we've attracted to come and buy our caravans is, is such an awesome bunch. Yeah. Um, and you know, I know for a fact, you know, it's a lot of our customers that are out there really pushing the limits and pioneering this country. Um, with these awesome bits of gear and um, you know they're giving us feedback and we you know we just keep listening away and trying to get it into these vans and, and you know keep keep working on it but um, as a business we're 
we're far from standing still. Um, yeah, check out our canopies, lightweight canopies too. You yeah, know, we got a few, few exciting <laughs> things there with, with obviously canopies. But um, yeah, thanks very much for um, listening in this afternoon. Yeah. And I hope we've somewhat educated it a little bit more about how we build caravans and, and um, yeah, some of the things to, to look out for when um, considering a purchase. But uh, thank you. Yeah. Happy adventure. Cheers.